the history of Indonesia and indeed Nusantara is filled with endless stories of courage. Yet perhaps there is no story more courageous than that of Juan. Fabled warriors said to possess superhuman physical capabilities to fight wars and protect their community. Their origins? The calm yet simultaneously ferocious province of Banda. The land of champions. Join us as we explore the essence of this magnificent place. See the beauty only on Sea Indonesia. With an area of 9,662 square kilometers, Banten is the second smallest province on the island of Java, only larger than the capital region of Jakarta. And yet, throughout its existence, the area has played a very important role in the economy of historic Nusantara. That is why, for thousands of years, Banten was at the epicenter of multiple invasions, wars, and power struggles between many great empires. Their conflicts generating paradigm shifts, which have influenced Nusantara to this very day. And leaving behind relics which serve as a reminder of a history long forgotten. And this is one of those relics. This is the Surosonan Kraton, and it was built in 1522 and finished in 1526, with these brick and mortar foundations being nearly 300 years old. It also coincided with the beginning of the Banten Sultanate, a sultanate that lasted for 287 years. This sultanate was founded after the capture of the port of Banten by Sunan Gunung Jati. Together with his son Molana Hasanuddin, he established the Banten Sultanate, with Molana becoming the sultan. Throughout its near 300-year existence, the sultanate's economy was built upon pepper. with its international trade mainly consisting of this commodity. However, everything changed in 1813 after years of civil unrest and the annexation of many lands and areas by the Dutch came the end of the Sultanate of Banten and with it, the destruction of this once grand palace. What remains our foundations, ruins, and the tree. A tree that once stood as a silent witness to the rise and fall of this once great kingdom. A great kingdom fallen, and with it, the hostile takeover by a foreign nation of this important economic powerhouse. But apart from the history 
the white sandy beaches and the other beautiful things about Banten. Banten is known for one more thing, being the home of Juara. And that is why I've come here to Anyer, where I am going to do a bit of training to become one myself and to learn what it takes to be one of the Juara. And so my training regime starts here at Pantai Pasir Putisiri where its fine grains of sand make for the perfect place for runs and calisthenics. Exercises that help to develop endurance and strength. Physical skills mastered by Juara. Interestingly enough, the reputation of Banten as the hallowed grounds of Juara was made rather recent as a result of business people and politicians in the 90s being Juara themselves. The real cultural history behind Banten is that of the clergy. A clergy whose followers were dedicated to the study of martial arts and self-defense. And it is said that their faith, combined with their physical training, is what enabled them to perform near-miraculous physical acts. And so, to experience the journey to become a Juwara myself, I set to train myself. Not only in harsher conditions, but also with people who have dedicated to training all their lives. Beaches simply would not be enough. See the beauty only on Sea Indonesia. Continuing my search for the ideal training grounds used by Juara, I found myself in the Banten Forest Park, known locally as Tahura. This 1,600 hectare conservation area is located near the shores of the Sunda Strait, just off the beaches of Charita. My purpose here? To test my physical endurance in a two hour hike through the forest. As you can see, that's the trek that lies ahead. I don't know how bad it's going to be, but uh, judging by the looks of it so far, it won't be that bad. Sadly, my overconfidence was about to be met with a slap of reality. Walking through the rainforest truly is something else. I've uh, trekked in the, uh, the States before, and how it usually is is there it's a wide opening with trees all around, but this, you're properly surrounded by bushes on all sides. Ew. Not to mention the slippery conditions. It is quite the challenge. There you go, exactly. <laughs> What's worse, in my haste to get to the forest park, I forgot a very important piece of kit. Now, as you can see, I'm not using any trekking poles. And that's probably the biggest regret of my life so far. Not to mention some branches tend to fall from the uh, treetops 
So it does get a bit dangerous. I might pick up a stick somewhere along the way that I can use to uh, help myself walk. Oh. Ah. Now this one's too big. This one's a bit too thin as you can see. It's just gonna break like that. So uh, we'll have to keep looking for one. Ah, this one looks ideal, a bit dirty, but uh, that's no problem for me. Ah, okay. But just as much as it can give, the forest can also be very punishing. Ah, with the dangers of the cliffside, the very jagged path and the absolute searing heat. This truly is a test of your mental strength and your physical endurance. A dangerous place then, but one juxtaposed by an absolutely beautiful scenery. beautiful scenery high up in the cliffs that once again found a way to provide. far from its last gift, as after an hour of hiking, we finally reached our first checkpoint. Oh, finally. <laughs> this is the Gendang Water, with a height of 8 meters and a current strong enough to sweep you off your feet is a dangerous force of Mother Nature. And yet, as ferocious as it was, it was also serene like nothing else. This serenity invoked focus. focus that could only be channeled through physical exercise. Training in this environment and being inspired by the beauty of nature, it is easy to fathom why this province breeds the very best of champions. Yet, incredibly, this would not be our final stop in our trek through the forest. For that, we had to travel further upstream. Fresh water and surrounded by canyons on both sides. <laughs> Very slippery. The challenge continues. The path was getting narrower and narrower with every step forward, and the water was getting deeper and deeper until eventually, our toes could no longer touch the floor.
Uh, to be swimming through a canyon like this, a very narrow ravine, it truly feels like walking into the halls of God. The ravine flowed left and right, its walls showing layers upon layers of earth and the millions of years of history hidden underneath. And as I traveled further in, the ravine became narrower and narrower still until finally I could travel no more. After trekking and swimming for 30 minutes from our first checkpoint, we reached our final destination. The Putri Water. Short, yet with very strong waters, it was the perfect location for a waterfall shower. This is Pencaksil, a form of martial arts credited by historians as originating from West Sumatra. It first spread throughout Java during the reign of the Sriwijaya Empire and has since branched out into more than 150 styles across many parts of the Indonesian archipelago. In Banten, this is the form of martial arts trained to Jawara. A perfect art then for me to continue on my journey. And so I came to the Tunas Makar Hermitage, just south of the Pandaglang town square, to train with the very best of Juara. This particular hermitage trains in the Chimande style of Panjaksila. And so I began my training with a man named Zayed, who has been with this organization since its very inception. And with Zayed teaching me the very basics of Silat, I was able to get to grips with the rudimentary movements. But the movements aren't everything. Just as important is the ability for fighters to take a hit. And so the elder of the hermitage, Abba Rashid, showed me exactly how they trained for that. And with my right forearm nearing its breaking point, it was time to do the same with my left. This is the most physical pain I have endured throughout this trip. Ow. Enaknya. Enak. Jadi di sini mah sebelum orang lain yang merasakan sakit dulu. Iya, yang sakit. Jadi enggak boleh, enggak bisa sama orang lain menyakiti karena sakit kita juga kan. 
udah merasakan sakit nggak pasti nggak boleh gitu jadi sakitnya kita duluan sebelum orang lain kita dulu yang sakit <laughs> jadi gitu ini aturan si pandai itu and so with my forearm sore and throbbing Zayed invited me to try a bit of light sparring no. yep. and through this I began to learn that a fight between two followers of Pencak Silat is special. And it became even more special when Zaid and Abarashid sparred themselves. Just look at the way they react to each other's moves, countering and countering one another like two rivers flowing into one. Yet, self-defense is only a single aspect of a three-pronged approach to Pencaksia. One of them is a dance, accompanied by traditional drums and gongs. And the other is this. This is Debus, a demonstration of the resilience of the disciples of Pencaksia that began here Banten in the 16th century. Despite their use of sharp weapons and dangerous objects, their performance draws no blood and opens no wounds. According to Muhammad Toib, the vice chairman of the PPSC, this is possible through a combination of years of training with an utter belief in oneself and God and a religious ritual that is said to prevent harm during the performance. Sebagai pelaku debus untuk tidak melukai diri sendiri saat tampil itu pertama yakin. Yakin akan uh, sebuah ilmu itu yang mana datangnya hanya dari Allah Subhanahu wa taala semata. Lalu sebelum melakukan debus kalau debus-debus ekstrim biasanya ada semacam pemagar suasana ya, pemagar pemagar pentas. Jadi dapat dilakukan kita melakukan ritual eh uh, apa hadorot minta kebarokan dan keselamatannya pada Allah Subhanahu wa taala. And thus, during this performance, they often invoke the name of God. Nearing the end, and to clean off any residue, they wash their hands. Only, instead of using water, they used acid, which created plenty of smoke. Honey doesn't seem okay. Honey doesn't seem okay. Seeing this demonstration and learning about its history and requirements helped me to truly understand why Banten is a breeding ground of champions. A combination of faith, rituals, and physical training with a variety of challenging training grounds, whether it be the canyons and waterfalls, 
beaches or the sea. And it creates one hell of a worry.